Sorry, I have to read it again. Okay, so this is Aaron's Law, Lesson 5, Tell. It's our last lesson for the week. This lesson's video features a difficult story of abuse by a basketball coach. The goal of this video is not to make you feel mistrustful of teachers or coaches, but to help you trust your instincts. If you see something or feel something that you know just isn't right, the protect yourself rules help us be mindful in every situation. And if we think a situation is unsafe and we know we have to get away and tell an adult right away. We also know that there are many safe adults in our lives who want us to talk to them if we are ever worried, scared, threatened, or abused. Parents, teachers, counselors, police officers, all are people that we can trust with that. By talking about abuse, we can prevent it or stop it from ever happening again, but we have to tell. So here's that video. It's short, four minutes. Hi, I'm Darius. If somebody touches you on a private body part, you might feel confused, scared, or embarrassed. Talking about it is probably the last thing you want to do. But if you keep it a secret, it won't stop. We got a new coach for the city basketball team this year. He was really nice, and everyone on the team liked him. He'd give us advice after practice and teach us new plays. But he spent a lot of time with my friend Jamal. Jamal was coach's favorite, and I was a little jealous. But coach was always touching Jamal. Coach even bought him a new pair of shoes. Sometimes Jamal would go into coach's office after practice. I thought it was weird, but Jamal never talked about it. So I didn't think of it again. Then one day, Coach called me into his office. I thought I was finally going to start a game. But then he told me to take my shirt off. I didn't want to. He said he was going to help me be a better athlete and that if I didn't do it, he would take me off the team. I told him no, and ran out. No one should ever ask you to take your clothes off or try to touch your private parts. Coach scared me, but I'm glad I knew to run away. Was this what he was doing with Jamal? I found Jamal waiting for his mom. It was hard, but I asked if Coach had done anything weird with him. He said no, but I know it wasn't true. I told him what happened. That Coach got me alone and wanted me to take my clothes off. I asked if that was what happened to him when he went to Coach's office. I wanted both of us to tell someone, but Jamal didn't want to. I asked him if he had promised Coach that he would keep it a secret. He told me Coach gave him those new shoes to keep him from telling. He was scared, but I told him we couldn't keep it a secret, or it would keep happening. Finally, he agreed to go with me to tell. His mom got there, and we told her everything. It was over after that. We had to talk to more people. But Coach was gone, and nobody else got hurt. This was a very rare and scary situation, Darius, but you handled it perfectly. You reacted to what your coach tried to do by telling him to stop and by running away. It was hard because everyone liked Coach. He was our friend, and we trusted him. Unfortunately, things like this have happened. It doesn't mean you shouldn't trust your teachers or coaches. Right. Just remember that if something like this does happen to you, say no. Run away and tell. Never keep it a secret. It wasn't easy, but I'm glad I was able to talk about it. For me, Jamal, and the rest of the team. Oh. 
Okay, I'm going to stop my share. So that might seem like a um, like a completely fictitious story, but the truth is in the news lately, we've seen a lot of stories of even college level athletes, Olympic level athletes who have been abused by their coaches because coaches are in a position of power over them. And so it is a situation that can come up and you need to be prepared and ready so that if you ever hear of it happening to anyone else, or you see something that just doesn't feel right, you'll be ready to speak out and tell so that you can bring it to a stop. You have the power. You just have to speak out. Now that the class has watched the video, we need to think about um, how, how the things that we saw. Jamal didn't think he could tell about what his coach did for a couple of reasons. He wanted to play. He wanted to be the favorite. He felt trapped and alone. And I think a lot of times kids feel guilty, like they're the ones who made it happen. Once it's happened once, they're too embarrassed. So thinking about how you could recognize a change in your friend or how you could remind kids that it is never their fault if something like this happens, never their fault. They did not bring it on, even if they did really like the coach, it didn't make it happen. So these people um, who abuse children in this way often are super nice people who love kids. And so that makes it really hard because they're people you trust and people that you like. Um, if someone is making you feel unsafe, think for a minute what you would do. If you were in that situation in the coach's office, what would you do to stop the situation? Think for a minute about what you'd be prepared to say or do. Um, I took a class once and they said one of the things about, I took a women's self-defense class. One of the things they said that happens is that people who are abusing other people are counting on their silence. And a lot of times when we're in a situation like that, we're so shocked that we can't say or do anything. So the very first thing they teach you to do in these women's self-defense courses is to scream no in a, the biggest voice you can. And they have you practice it. So you stand in a room and everybody sits there screaming, no, stop back off. <laughs> and so actually, when you turn off your video today, I recommend you guys practice that because the truth is, if we haven't practiced it, if we've never done it, it's harder to do. So learning how to just speak up and say no is actually something you kind of have to practice. Telling about abuse is also hard if the abuser is someone we know. You might feel like the rest of your friends are going to be mad at you because you're going to lose this great coach, but you have to trust your instincts. We know that any touch to the private body part, anyone asking us to take off our clothing is absolutely unacceptable. It's abuse. So be thinking about that and don't make excuses for yourself or your friends. Someone who is abused may feel alone, but we are never really alone. There are a lot of safe adults out there. Again, think of someone that you would tell if something like this happened. Your mom, your dad, your grandma, your aunt, Betty your teacher, your counselor, because talking about abuse can be so hard. And maybe right now you're thinking of something that has happened in the past that you were embarrassed about and you didn't speak up about. Even though it might have stopped, it's a good idea to talk to your parents about it because holding on to those feelings can also make us feel terrible and not as prepared to speak up the next time. So if something like that has happened to you, you might want to talk to your parents or talk to a counselor about it. It can help you work through your feelings. All right. That is it for our Aaron's Law lessons. Remember that these lessons came about because kids are abused, unfortunately. And this particular girl who made us have Aaron's Law decided that here we are training kids how to handle um you know, get how to get off of a school bus, how to uh, practice earthquake drills at school. And we never teach kids how to speak up for themselves for sexual abuse or physical abuse, hitting, hitting or unsafe things. So you guys need to know about this. I know you've seen it through the years. You're going to continue to see these lessons every year. Actually, there'll be new lessons next year because they do lessons for fourth and fifth grade, second and third grade. Um, but you'll be prepared for uh, what comes next. And you'll be prepared to speak up for yourselves and your friends. 
If you have any questions or you want to talk to me, I'm opening breakout rooms now. Javen, if you and your mom could go into room one, and please, guys, don't interrupt room one. Javen's just coming back, and we need to help him um, get ready for his state test. Uh, Mila, okay. room five, that'd be great. And then anybody else who wants to wait for me in room two, three, or four, after I talk to Javen and talk to Mila, I'll come talk to you. And if you have any questions or want to talk to me about the stuff we just covered, we can do that too. Um, do I have any other questions that I need to answer before I go?